And welcome back to Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here with Kevin Page. He's now the uh, president and CEO of the Institute of Fiscal Studies and Democracy at the University of Ottawa, former parliamentary budget officer. Kevin, one of the interesting sort of slides in the budget or, or charts uh, was the OECD uh, rankings, which put Canada 38 out of 38 advanced countries in terms of future growth. What's what's going on there? What what? How do you how do you unpack that for us? Yeah, it's it's a terrible ranking, obviously, Tony. I think it's um, I think that type of evidence has probably encouraged the government to actually talk about growth in a more forceful way, in in its latest budget. Again, we didn't really see a lot from the Liberals in the policy platform that was really talking about growth. Um, so I, I mean, in Canada, I think his, historically, at least for the last number, number of decades, we've seen relatively low productivity uh, growth rates relative to other countries, certainly in, uh, our, with respect to our biggest trading part of the United States. And also we're, we're obviously dealing with an aging demographic, which affects labor force input, uh, labor force participation. So yeah, it's a, it's a big concern. Like how do we grow the economy in the future that will generate these sort of revenues that will pay for important programs I think Canadians want in general, like, like a public support childcare type of program. Um, so yeah, I think also we've seen relatively weak business investment, um, you know, even I think going into prior to COVID, and um, I mean, there's lots of room for business investment to grow and it, we're probably with interest rates rising, we're not, not gonna make that you know, easier for businesses. Also with inflation relatively high and rising, maybe it's also be a little bit more difficult, but we certainly want a lot more business investment. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there is some talk in the budget with, in terms of stimulating that investment. And you know, really, in, you know, and so those, those strategic minerals that are gonna be so important for us to really electrify uh, our, um, our, our economy going forward. Yeah, I, you raise a couple of really interesting points there. Uh, you know, obviously, as you said right at the outset, this was in the wake of the Liberal NDP agreement on supply and uh, and uh, approving budgets and whatnot, confidence motions in the House of Commons. Uh, and so a lot of emphasis or a lot of people were looking for social programs, uh, enhancement, that kind of thing. But you're also seeing, and this is your point as well, like uh, the, the government included that, uh, that chart showing us 38 out of 38 countries in terms of future growth. They, uh, they wouldn't put that in the budget document unless they were concerned about it. They wanted to somehow show that they were addressing it. So you've got kind of two things happening at the same time in the budget. I don't want to overanalyze here, but you've got you know the promises they made for social spending, let's put it that way, but they're also concerned about uh, future economic growth, which of course, that's the, basically the way that you pay for all of these things. Is that, am I being too simplistic in my analysis or do you, do you see that as well? No, I, I see that as well, um, Tony. I think, um, I mean, this evidence that, you know, Canada's, you know, productivity has been, has been sluggish and that has an impact on our ability to kind of grow the economy. Um, I think the government over the past couple of years, there's so much focus has been dealing with the pandemic. It's, you know, it's, it's talked about the post COVID economy, but it's really hard to make that transition in policy terms when you're still dealing with pretty significant infection rates. Um, so again, now we're in this environment. I think we saw that in the Ontario budget as well, you know, the need to have make important investments in infrastructure that will actually grow a different economy in the post COVID world. Mm. And uh, I think it's a healthy thing, but I think, you know, Canada, I think other, some other countries as well, and, and the provinces are struggling to make that transition. So yeah, we're living um, in those sort of, two, you know, sort of those two camps. Um, there seems to be a debate also now about monetary policy as well as fiscal policy. Uh, maybe this is outside of your mandate, but I'd love to get your point of view on, on what's happening here. Yeah, I think there's a sense that, um, you know, in this in difficult environment where we've had like a supply shock uh, thanks to the pandemic, and I think, you know, experiencing potentially another global supply shock because of the Russia-Ukraine war that, like, you know, we still have to find a way to normalize policies Fiscal policies, we saw deficits, you know, well above $300 billion a few years ago, coming down fairly dramatically last year. I think it was one of the big surprises in the budget 2022 mm -hmm. that the economy did grow, that produced a lot more revenue. So the deficit was, but still over $100 billion, which is kind of unthinkable, Tony, in, the, in your times as, you know, as you know, president of the Treasury Board to run deficits, 
you know, five percent, four or five percentage points of GDP. So I think it's important that fiscal policy that we take the foot off the gas pedal. And I think the same way our monetary policy that, you know, with um, the policy rates, um, you know, need to go up. Hold, hold on to that thought. Sorry, Kevin, we're going to take another brief break, but I do want to return to this very important point. We'll be back after these messages.